we have created a variety of landing pages before but today's video is something special take a look at this page right here this isn't your average page and a bit of gsap won't cut it notice the physics on those cards they fall so realistically now let me show you my version it took me about five to six hours to nail down this exact fall animation complete with content reveals and text animations in today's video i'm going to show you how to recreate this experience using html css javascript and matter.js creating unique content like this takes a lot of time especially to consistently release it every week so if you find this video helpful please leave a like it really helps me out you can also access the source code through the pro membership the link is in the description all right let's dive into the video let's start by creating a container inside this container we'll add a button with the id toggle button next we'll add a div with the class name item and place an image inside it we'll duplicate this item multiple times update the image urls and assign a unique class name to each this will help us position them on the page later now let's add an overlay which will serve as the background Inside the overlay, we'll add an H1 tag. Next, we move on to the content section. We'll divide the content into four columns. Each piece of text will be wrapped in a div so we can apply a clip path for the line reveal animation. We'll fill these columns with some placeholder text for now. That's it. Now let's move on to the styling. Let's begin by resetting some default styles. We'll remove margin and padding from all elements and set the box sizing to border box for better layout control. Next, we'll style the HTML and body to take up the full viewport width and height. We'll define the font and set the background to black. We'll also hide the overflow. For the images, we'll ensure they cover their container completely with object fit cover. Now let's style the container. We'll position it absolutely to cover the entire viewport and set a z-index of 2 to ensure it stays on top. For the toggle button, we'll position it at the top right corner with a bit of padding and set the background to none. We'll also give it a z-index of 2. Each item will be absolutely positioned with a fixed width and height and will give them a solid border. We'll then position each item uniquely on the page using top and left properties. Next, we'll style the overlay. It will cover the entire viewport and have a semi-transparent background with a z-index of 0. We'll also use clip path which we'll later update to create the content reveal animation. Inside the overlay, the H1 will be positioned at the bottom left with some padding. We'll use a different font for the text, making it uppercase. We are going to split the H1 using utility function, wrapping each letter inside span tag. So we need to set the font size for the letters. Now for the content section, we'll use Flexbox to create four equal columns. Each column will have some padding and a gap between items. We'll wrap each line of text in a div to apply a clip path for animations. Finally, each line will be positioned relatively with a fixed height and will set an opacity for visual effect. The text inside will be transformed to appear from below with the translate Y property preparing them for the reveal animation. That's the CSS. Now let's move on to the JavaScript. First of all, let's paste a utility function that I've shared in previous videos. This function splits the text of an element into individual letters and wraps each letter inside a span tag. We'll call this function and pass our header into it. This will allow us to apply animations to each individual letter later on. 
Next, let's set up Matter.js, the physics engine we'll be using for the animations. Matter.js allows us to create realistic physics simulations in the browser. First, we'll import the necessary components from Matter.js. Now let's create the physics engine. We set the gravity to zero for now because we want to control when the gravity affects our items later in the animation. Next, we'll create and run the runner to update the engine. The runner is responsible for continuously updating the physics simulation. Now let's grab all the items we want to animate and store their initial positions and angles. This way, we can reset their positions back to the original state after the animation. We map over these elements to create an array of objects each containing the initial x and y coordinates and the angle of the item. This information will help us reset the item's position after the animation. Now that we have set up Matter.js and stored all the initial positions of our items, let's create the physics bodies for each item and add them to physics world. We'll map over our items and use Matter.js to create rectangle bodies for each one. We use map function to iterate over each item. This allows us to create a physics body for each item. For each item, we create a rectangle body using the rectangle function. We pass the initial x and y positions, the width and the height of the item. Then we set several properties for each body. Restitution, which controls the bounciness of the body. Friction controls how much the bodies resist sliding against each other. Friction air, which simulates the air resistance slowing down the bodies slightly over time. Aesthetic ensures the bodies don't move until we explicitly allow them to by changing this property later. We then add each body to the physics world using the add function. Finally, we return each body creating an array of bodies that we can manipulate later. That's it for creating and adding the bodies. Now let's move on to the next step. Next, we'll create a floor for our physics simulation. This floor will act as a boundary to prevent the items from falling off the screen. We'll create a static rectangle body for the floor. We'll again use the rectangle function to create a floor that spans the entire width of the window. We'll position it just below the bottom of the viewport by setting its Y coordinate slightly below the window height. We set is static to true to ensure the floor doesn't move. Finally, we'll add the floor to the physics world. Now let's set up some variables to control the animation. We initialize gravity enabled to false. This variable will toggle the gravity on and off during the animation. The animation frame variable will store the ID of the animation frame, allowing us to control and cancel animations if needed. We set is animating flag to false initially. This variable will help us prevent multiple animations from running simultaneously. The duration variable defines the duration of the animation in seconds and the ease out quad is a quadratic easing function that creates a smooth transition effect. It takes a time value between 0 and 1 and returns an eased value. This function will be used to interpolate values during the animation. Now let's create a function to handle the animations for the overlay and other elements when we toggle the gravity. First, we select the overlay element. Next, we define the toggle clip path function. This function will use GSAP to animate various properties based on whether gravity is enabled or not. First, we animate the clip path of the overlay to change its shape based on whether gravity is enabled. This creates a smooth transition effect. Next, we change the color of the toggle button based on the gravity state. We also animate the position of the text inside the columns as they reveal animation. When gravity is enabled, the text will move to its original position. When gravity is disabled, the text will move 30 pixels down, hiding them back. We animate the font size of the H1 elements inside the overlay. The size changes based on the gravity state, creating a dynamic effect. We'll also animate the position of the H1 elements inside the overlay. This position also changes based on the gravity state. Finally, we use GSAP to apply these animations to the respective elements.
Now let's add an event listener to the toggle button to control the gravity and trigger the animations. First, we select the toggle button and add a click event listener. We check if the animation is already running with the flag. If true, we return right away to prevent multiple animations from running simultaneously. We then set the flag to true to indicate that an animation is in progress. Next, we toggle the gravity and animate the items accordingly. If gravity is not enabled, we set the world's gravity to 1. This makes the items fall. We also make the bodies dynamic by setting is static to false and giving them a random angular velocity to make the fall more realistic. Finally, we set gravity enabled flag to true. If gravity is already enabled, we set the world's gravity to zero. This stops the items from falling. We then make the body static again by setting the flag to true. We animate each body back to its initial position and angle using the animate back function. This function interpolates the position and angle of each body back to its initial values using the easing function we created. We use request animation frame to update the position and angle smoothly over time. After toggling the gravity and animating the items, we call the toggle clip path function to animate the overlay and other elements. Finally, we reset the flag to false after a delay to allow the animations to complete. This delay ensures that the next click event will only be processed after the current animations are finished. Finally, let's synchronize the positions and rotations of our items with their corresponding physics bodies. This ensures that the items on the screen accurately reflect the physics simulation. We'll use the after update event from Matter.js to update the items after each physics engine update. For each body, we find the corresponding item using the index. We then update the item stop and left styles to match the body's position adjusted by half the item's height and width to center it correctly. We also update the item's transform style to match the body's angle, ensuring the item rotates as the body does. By updating the item's styles in this way, we ensure that the visual representation of our items matches their physical simulation, creating a seamless and realistic animation. That's it for syncing the items with the physics bodies. This step ensures that our animations look smooth and accurate. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.